We hear from the three of the pivotal figures of Christianity today in our readings. First of all, in our first reading, we hear St. Peter giving a speech, and he says, Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. In the second reading, we hear from St. John, the other of the two central apostles, two of the inner circle of Jesus. St. John says this in writing our second reading, My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. So both of them, both Peter and John, the two uh, inner circle apostles, are talking in today's readings about repenting, uh, forgiveness of sins, trying to not sin, but if we do sin, we have Jesus to come to. And then finally, in the gospel, we have Jesus himself speaking. This is actually a speech that he gives, or what he's writing, or, or sorry, what he's saying uh, in this reading tonight in our gospel is from Easter night, right? Easter, it's on Easter Sunday. We hear in the beginning, it says that the two disciples recounted what had happened. This, that's, they're talking about what had happened on the road to Emmaus, right? So they, they have that whole event Sunday, Easter Sunday evening, and then these two people that had had that experience run back to the apostles, and that's where the gospel picks up. So we know this is on Easter Sunday evening. Christ is speaking to them, and he says this, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations. So Jesus Christ on Easter Sunday, is telling the apostles this happened and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name. Repentance for sins, forgiveness of sins. Jesus is saying that's why, in a sense, this happened. That's what is supposed to happen out of this event, that repentance and the forgiveness of sins should be preached to everyone. So we hear this common theme running through our readings tonight about this idea of forgiveness of sin. And I'd like to just say a brief word then about forgiveness and about the, the uh, sacrament of confession. I've mentioned many times one of my favorite authors, G.K. Chesterton. Um, he said, he was asked, he, he was a convert to Catholicism. And he was asked in an interview, why did you become Catholic? And his answer was uh, five words. To have my sins forgiven. Why did you become Catholic? To have my sins forgiven. This repentance, this forgiveness of sins that we hear in both readings and in the gospel takes place for us and, and, and happens for us in the sacrament of confession. Right? And I think it's just important for us to... There's many ways of answering that question, why did you become Catholic, or what's the best thing about Catholicism, or what's the central teaching of, of Catholicism. You could come at that from a lot of different directions, but, but I love, and I would just like to reflect on that answer tonight for just a moment, to have my sins forgiven. It's one of the great graces, one of the great gifts, one of the central things there that's at the heart, and that's why we're hearing that from Peter, John, and Jesus that one of those central things that's wrapped up at the very heart, the very core of our faith, is the forgiveness of sins. There's a lot of, you know, things going on in our Catholic faith all the time, but that are sort of exterior or external or not really at the, at the crucial core. This is. Forgiveness of sins and the sacrament of confession is. And so, you know, we think about... I think a lot of times, I think, here, here's a, maybe a, a question I'd like us to think about, you know. When we, there are a lot of people that need to hear that. There are a lot of people that want to know that their sins have been forgiven, that, that desire, they might not know it even, but they have a great desire to have their sins forgiven, right? I see it all the time as a priest, the joy, the reliefs, the, 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 the happiness, the peace that comes upon people in the sacrament. In the six weeks of Lent between the two parishes, we had over 210 people receive the sacrament of confession, receive absolution from the priest, to have a priest pray over them and say, say the words, it's Christ speaking to them, I absolve you from your sins. 
That is one of the main reasons to become Catholic. There are a lot of great things happening outside the tent of Catholicism. Right? Chesterton was outside the tent of Catholicism. He had a relationship with Christ. He had scripture. He had prayer. He had worship. He had all those things outside the tent of Catholicism. What he did not have in, in his, what he believed and what we believe is Catholics, he's saying, what I didn't have was forgiveness of my sins. There's a lot of great things even happening beyond the tent of Christianity. Right? Even people that don't profess Christ, there's still a lot of great work that's being done, a lot of you know, sense of, of uh, you know, respecting the dignity of the other person and let's work together on service things and projects and care for the poor and care for the sick and the vulnerable and the marginalized and refugees. All that kind of stuff is happening even outside the tent of Christianity. But what's happening at the heart of our Catholic faith is not happening out there. What's, hap what's not happening outside that tent of Catholicism is Jesus Christ speaking to people through the words of the Catholic priest, I absolve you from your sins. There's a lot of people that need to hear that. I need to hear that. I try to go monthly and it's been about two months. I need it badly. I'm looking forward to uh, tomorrow, I think I'll be with some brother priests in Terre Haute for confirmation. And I'm looking forward to asking one of them, pulling them aside, hey, can I go to confession? It's been too long. Right? I need it. You, we all need it. But not only that, I think it's important for us to think about all the other people that are in our, in our lives that are not here. Right? A lot of times we sit on that. We sit on the faith. Well, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to invite anybody. I don't want to, you know, preach the good news. Jesus Christ says on Easter Sunday, I came that repentance, I, I died, and so that repentance and the forgiveness of sins would be preached where? To the nations. To the nations. Jesus Christ desires that repentance and forgiveness of sins through the sacrament is preached to the entire world including your neighbors, including your friends, including your family members, right? Including my neighbors, and my family, and my friends. Sometimes we sit on that, right? We sit on our faith. We don't want to, to, to bring it to other people. But we hear Jesus, we hear Peter, and we hear John saying it's at the core of our faith. And so first of all, I ask us to, to turn inward on ourselves for just a moment. How long has it been? For you, are, are those words that you need to hear? Do you have sins that, that you need to hand over to Christ? Do you have things that are going on in your life that you know Jesus Christ needs to speak to you through the priest? I absolve you from that. Do you have that in your heart? Is that something that's needed? Has it been too long for you? I promise you can ask the 210 people that went there's nothing waiting for you in there. There's no condemnation. There's nothing but peace and joy that come with the forgiveness of sins, that come with repentance. But then after looking inward on yourself, I invite you to look outward. Is there chaos in the lives of, of friends or loved ones? Are, are, are there sins that either subtle or outright are, are wrecking their lives or are causing great harm to them? Are, are your neighbors hurting in any way, whether it's seen or unseen? Do they need to hear that? Has anyone offered that to them? Has anyone invited them to that? Has anyone talked to them about that? Jesus desires, on the very day that he resurrected and afterward, desired that this be brought to everyone. We pray tonight for the strength to seek it out ourselves and then for the strength to help invite other people to the font, the never-ending font of God's mercy that awaits in the sacrament of confession.